Hi, welcome back to Mari's house by Gilbert Blyton. Collection four, three books in one, written by Pamela Cox. So we read to uh, we read to let's have a look. Renewation at Mari Towers. There was a shock in store for Daffy as she went to tea that afternoon. I say, where is the idiot? she asked the others as they made the way to the dining room. Oh, her uncle came to visit and he has taken idiot and her sister out to tea, said Ivy. Lucky idiot! I bet we're day those marvelous chocolate cakes. Well, I can't say that I'm been at her, said Daffy pulling a face. I wouldn't want to go out with some stern old uncle and bossy old sister. Yes, Lizzie's rather wet blanket, said Katie, though. I must say it's probably Idiot's own fault for not standing up to her more. Yes, I gather that Lizzie has always ruled the roost at home, said Daffy. And Idiot allowed her to get away with her sister. My goodness. I would never stand for it. My sister Sally spoke to me the way that Lizzie does to Edith. Sally's an, an awfully good source, but she could boss me around too, if I let her, for that is what big sisters are like. I showed her right from the start that I wouldn't put it up with the sort of nonsense. Though I told her, Daffy, hang her name from a behind that brought Daffy to a halt. She turned sharply. Mouth dropping open, then she saw the person who hailed her was none than Sally. Sally gasps. Daffy is staring at her sister as they couldn't believe her eyes. What on earth are you doing here? Why? I'm here for the old girl's renunciation, said Sally, ruffling her sister's curly hair. Mother was going to write and tell you I was coming. But I thought it would be a nice surprise if you turned unexpectedly. Well, that's certainly a surprise, said Daffy, who didn't quite know whether to feel dismayed or delighted. She was terribly fan of her big sister, of course, but she certainly didn't want Sally keeping a watchful eye on her. Goodness me, Daffy, said Sally, see, eyeing Daffy sternly. Whatever have you been doing? With one sock up and down, do tidy yourself up. Has the daily Daffy bent over and pulled her off standing sock, then to the nourishment of the watching first formers. Sally straightened the girl's tie before standing back and saying, There, that looks much neater. Off you go now or you'll be late for tea. And that will never do. Yes, Sally, said Daffy meekly, her cheeks turning pink, as she saw the others struggling to control her mirth. Sally so strode past the first woman and went to join the others who were already seated at the third former's table. Mom was a bump quite overcome with the light at seeing so many of her old favorites again. Was standing by Dow's chair, her hand on the girl's shoulder and beam of pleasure in her face. Ah, oh, how good it is to see you again. Oh, what fun young ladies you have grown into, she cried. But what is me of this? She will come along later, said Iris. Of course, Mamsel. You know that Mavis is now a great opera singer, don't you? Yes, indeed, it said Mamsel. The dear girl sent me to one of her records, and what pleasure it gives me to listen to her voice. I bet that Mavis has gone all high and mighty boastful again. Now she is famous, murdered Alyssa to Daryl and Sally. Well, if she has, we should bring her back down to earth what a good daughter of my child's common sense, said Sally firmly. I say, who's the young woman over at the new mysterious table? Asked Mary Lou. She must be new. Yeah, she looks rather jolly, said Belinda. Oh, that's Miss Nicholson, said Ewan, helping herself to slice a bread and a butter. She is a geography mysteries and a very good sort. She and I are best friends. The others looked at one another in surprise, for 
The plain, sensible looking Miss Nicholson was the very last person I would have respected Gillen to be a friend with. Heavens, whispered Daphne to Mary Lou, Gillen really has changed. It is such a warm and pleasant evening. Many of the girls went to stroll in the grounds after tea. Down their friends picked up a sunny pot on the lawn near the big driveway and sat down. Your friend Miss Nicholson will be missing your company while we you are with us with the renunciation, remarked Sally. Yes, though she quite understood that I couldn't pass up the opportunity to join in the renunciation, said Ewan. You must introduce us to her, said Daryl, thinking that she might be able to get some information from Miss Nicholson. Perhaps she would like to join us in the common room tonight. I'm sure it will be much more pleasant for her than sitting alone in the study. Thank you, said Gillen, flushing with pleasure. I will ask her, for I'm sure that she will enjoy the company. Here, look what's coming on the drive, cried Daphne suddenly. My word, did you ever see that car size before? The sixth woman turned into the heads and saw a very long, expensive looking car making its way up to the drive. Goodness, said Mary Lou, her almost stuttering. From her head, who on earth can this be? A group of six women were standing nearby, and they too wonder who was that gonna be. At last, the car drew to a halt, and uniformed a young got out open one of the back doors. The young woman who emerged drew gasps of languid and very expensive dress. Her red hair was her ears and her throat. I know who that is. Said, cried Amy. It's Mavis Ellison, the opera singer. My parents taught me to hear the singing oh, during some holidays and was simply stunning. Oh, I wonder if she would give me her autograph. Of course, Amy wasn't the only one to have her recognize Mavis and scores of her eyes followed her young girl so that she liked to ask for an autograph. But Mavis looked so haughty and unapproached. That no one did, just as I thought, whispered Alyssa to the others. Fame has gone to Mavis' head. Oh, what a shame, replied Darlene in dismay. When she let Mari tell, she really settled down and become one of us. Well, she didn't need it, seeing that she's going to queen it over us, said Irene and Nellie. Mavis isn't going to spoil our renunciation. Mabel was almost upon there now. She looked. Grand that successfully, Mary Lou made up to get it. But Daphne pulled her back down saying she's not rolling Mary Lou, even though she might think it is. How lovely to see you all, said Mavis in a bored, rather effective voice. Of course, I'm dreadfully busy these days, but I managed to take some fun and fit in the resolution in. Well, her writing, said Alice. Bitterly, I should jolly well think you are, said Mavis Stone. You know that I'm in an opera singer now? Then the face bucked into a broad grin, and the eyes nourishment of the others, she threw her head back, rolling with laughter. Ha ha ha! Oh, you face it! She cried when she stopped laughing. I knew that you'd be wondering if I had gone back to my old unpleasant weight, so that I thought that I'd play a little trick on you. You rich Mavis, cried Daryl, also laughing. Yes, it must have made two of us didn't wonder if he would have had changed you, said Lisa. Having the grace to brush a little, did you sit down or don't you want to get an expensive looking dress or your eyes dirty? As if I care for that, said Mavis, walking down in the grass beside Alyssa. I say, isn't that marvelous to be together again? Do you always travel by tougher driving car, Malice? Asked Daphne curiously. Of course not. <laughs> Laughed Mavis. I persuaded the director of my opera company to lend me this car and cluffer for the day, so that I can just make a grand entrance. Well, you certainly has fooled us. Laughed Belinda. It's ten minutes to six. Says Sally, looking at her watch. You know that Miss Grayling asked us all to go to study at six. So she did. Said Darrow. Oh, want to be. Wonderful to see her again. I feel rather nervous about this, said Mario Lou with a little laugh. <laughs> Nonsense, why should you? said Alyssa, giving her a little push. Just remember that you are nursing Sitter now. 
Mary Lou, not a schoolgirl. I'm sure that when they're confident, they won't let you lose on awards. I am, said Mary Lou. It's funny though. No one back at my house. I feel like a timid little schoolgirl again. As it turned out, Mary Lou wasn't the one who was chosen as going back into the time when she was faced Miss Grillin. There were some people thought there are the whole girls in the head study who naturally commanded respect and when Squirrelby, Miss Growing was one of them. But the head very soon and the girls at the case, each of them turned one path lives had allowed. Addie, of course, had a purse of care and music, while Belinda was making a lame as she the artist. Daphne was working as security on her father's office. Sally had just started teaching at an in-fact school and was loving every minute of it. As for clever, quick, witted Alyssa, she had found a care where she could put her brains good use and surprise everyone by joining the police force. Well, Daryl explained on hearing this piece of news, that's certainly something you can get your teeth into. It will take a jolly ceremony to add with you, Alyssa. You and Anita as you are doing, of course, said the head with a small or Bill and Clasera. I'm glad that you are bunny to leave the staples for a few days to come and join us. Tell my brothers are looking at the things while we are here, said Bill. We couldn't have missed this renovation for the world. Well at least you can relax and enjoy yourselves, knowing that your horses are good hands. And Miss Grelling then she turned to Mavis saying with a smile, I imagine that everyone in the country must know your name by now. And Daryl Force, he tell me you are a reporter in a newspaper. Yes, Miss Growing, said Daryl with a smile. I enjoyed it tremendously for I've always loved writing. In fact, he paused for she had received a piece of very good news the day before. But perhaps mentioning in here in front of others would seem like boasting. Sally, who already knew the news, was spoke up saying, Go on, Daryl, tell everyone. The girls and Miss Growing looking up very curious now and clearing her throat. Daryl said, <clears throat> I have been writing a children's book in my spare time. And a little while ago, I sent it to a publisher. It was just that anyone could be interested in it. But, well, they had decided to publish it. Yes, My dear, that's marvelous news, exclaimed Miss Grelling. And the girls agreed, all gathering around. Daryl took Dapper on the back and offered their congratulations. Good for you, Daryl. Just think, when you're a famous author... We will be able to say that we are at school. And it's a sex to you, Daryl. What is your book about, asked Ewan. Daryl laughed a little selfie carefully and said, Well, actually, it's about a girl's boarding school or not unlike Mario Charles. Everyone was simply thrilled to hear this. And Miss Grayling with a smile, You certainly have been able to draw on your personal experience for that, Daryl. The conversation continued for several more minutes. Then the head said, It's very good to have you all back here as a responsible adult. Even though it's only for a few days, I heard that you will have a pleasure in a nursery and that it brings you many happy memories for you. Well, we are all very grateful to having us, said Daryl. The old girls made their way back to the common room in the final manner. Then as they soon the door closed behind them, I jumped in the air and uh, cried, Hurrah! We're back to Motorjowers! Alyssa grinned and shook her head honestly. Honestly, Iron, I don't think that you will ever grow up and be a responsible adult. So, this is chapter 17 in Goodbye, Mari Child. Chapter 18 is a shot for Gwen. See you next chapter.